What's up, everyone? Mr. Roskam here from the All Things Star Wars podcast, doing a little bit of The Old Republic. So I'm actually multi-boxing The Old Republic. I'm playing three Jedi Knights right now. My triplets, Alara, Anara, and Amara. I've been a big multi-boxer in MMOs in the past. I started multi-boxing EverQuest back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and then into World of Warcraft for years. And now I've been multi-boxing The Old Republic for just a little over a month now boosted all three of these characters up to 65 and then got them to 70 got them to command level 300 when they had the double experience last week so i'm gonna go ahead and put on a command boost right now with all three girls and we're gonna run through hammer station master mode i'm running with lana who is a level 41 or 42 i'm sorry in healing spec and um, I've been able to do master mode in the past with this team, but I want to go ahead and get it on video. And I want to try and do it in a timely manner. So we got two hours left on our command boost, so we'll see how we do on time by the end. So trash mobs are pretty easy. There's one pull. I don't know how the hell that happened. There's one pull that's always kind of been a pain in the ass and it's actually coming up but since i realized recently that hey your companion's influence level is actually a uh, uh, really important uh, and and i worked on getting that up it has not been a problem so i like to line of sight pull these next couple of pulls just because it makes it a little bit easier because my girls have a lot of aoe abilities turn lana back on you got to turn Lana off when you do these line of sight pulls because otherwise she'll just jump right into combat. She's uh, crazy like that. All right, this is the pull that used to be a super pain in the ass, especially when I was first trying master modes before my gear was really good. Now it's not that bad. So turn her on. Jump into the fight. AoE taunt. Get a couple of defensive cooldowns. And then we should be good. Yeah, Lana being level 42 is a fantastic fucking healer. And just for reference, my main Alara, she is a defense Jedi Guardian, while the other two are Vigilance. Turn Lana off. This pull, you don't really have to line of sight, but it makes it a little bit easier. My girls, they, uh, auto follow is a little weird in this game compared to other MMOs. I'm getting used to it. Like I said, I've only been boxing for about a month now. Uh, I'm still kind of getting used to it. Not going to line of sight pull this pack. They're pretty easy overall. Now, one important thing to have, especially when you're trying to get through these flash points fast, where... Oh, I've got a girl who fell behind, and now she pulled another pack of mobs. Two. Ah, god damn it. I almost feel like restarting this video. That normally does not happen. But, you know, again, multi-boxing, that's the kind of shit that can happen. It's It ain't perfect, especially in this game. Ugh. Anyway. Hello? Can't do that. Oh, god damn it. All right, anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, revive Anara, who fell behind as she fucked my shit up. Not off to a good start there. Just gonna skip that guy. Anyway, if you really want to get through these flashpoints fast, especially Hammer Station, you want an archaeologist and a slicer. Archaeology, they can activate this drill. One thing you'll notice is I'm going to have to move all of my girls individually across this threshold. There are a couple of points throughout the course of Hammer Station where auto follow will not work, like the girls will not follow you past a certain point. So I got to manually move them. Same thing happens with my companion, too. 
And you'll see, there's another one down the line that's a uh, pain that I have to do. This first boss, pretty easy overall. It's really just, uh, just a burn down and um, just avoid one specific mechanic that you'll see. This guy summons his demolition drones, and what I gotta do when he summons those is just basically get everybody out of the way. Drinking some Yingling Oktoberfest beer. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Oktoberfest beers are on the shelf. It's like a Marzen beer, and oh, it's so good. So as you can see, this is a pretty easy fight. Lana's keeping me topped off health-wise, and she's still able to DPS a little bit. Once he summons his demolition drones, I just have to stop DPSing and move everybody out of the way when they do their little explode. But I'll wait until they all kind of cluster in right. on the boss. So there's the demolition drones. Let him get in, let him get in. All right, now we'll move. And kaboom. Go in for just a second until the next wave. And here they are. Move out. Boom. Do a little more DPS for the third wave. And get the hell out of the way. Boom. All right. Now we DPS him down. There's going to be one more set of demolition drones coming before the end of this fight. But as you can see, he's over halfway dead. We're all topped off health wise. Very, very easy fight on master mode overall. So, if you don't listen to the All Things Star Wars podcast, you should really subscribe. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere you can find podcasts. Uh, all Things Star Wars, me and my co-host Dave, we talk about, well, all things Star Wars. And I'll get into some of the subject topics on the next boss fight. But for now, we got to get our girls the hell out of the way. Kind of distracting myself. Alright, one more wave. And move, move, move. Come on. Alright, and let's finish him off. And he's dead. Alright, so I will need the refined isotope on my main. Pass on the other girls and just loot. Pass and loot. And I'll go ahead and scavenge him. So yeah, that's that. First boss, pretty damn easy. I mean, it's really just... You burn them down, keep uh, aggro with your tank, and then just avoid the AoE when it happens. This next pack of mobs, I try to avoid if at all possible, but with the auto follow the way it is, sometimes my other girls will still trigger the, the combat. So we'll see. We'll see if they're nice to me today. Try to skirt around. All right, so far so good. All right. Actually made it. Now a lot of the times with for trash mobs I may not loot just because it's a lot faster to skip loot and the uh, it's really not that much. Like I got 129 credits there. Not really that big of a deal. Especially if I'm really trying to grind out these uh, experience boosts, then I will skip all loot and just go as fast as humanly possible. For this, since I just started a boost. Not that big of a deal. I may loot. I may not. It's, it's whatever. Alright, so the next pull we're going to line a sight. I'm going to turn Lana off. Get out of the way. Assist. Turn Lana back on. And jump. Oh boy what the hell happened there. My force leap didn't work. It's all good. Luckily, I'm fucking awesome. And that'd be that. Moving on. Like I said, it's good to have slicing and archaeology. If you slice this elevator, you can skip like three to four packs of mobs. 
just got to be careful on this elevator with the auto follow because sometimes the girls won't get all the way on or they'll fall off or did that slice oh for fuck's sake on and then sometimes they won't follow me off the elevator when we get to the top so I'll have to make sure that they all get off with me <laughs> and all right they seem to all come this time <laughs> I love triple force leap it's great so I use a, uh, a Nostromo gamepad I guess it's now Razor they bought out Nostromo not too long ago uh, or Belkin, I should say. But I use these game pads. I'll show you when the flashpoint is done. But all of my hotkeys, my one through zero, are all mapped to different keys on this uh, game pad. So that's why you don't see me clicking a lot of buttons here. Because it's all stuff that I'm clicking through my game pad. Alright, for this next portion, I will manually move my girls past uh, that next pack of mobs. Just because those cannons have a shitload of HP. So, they uh, they take forever to burn down for little reward. This next boss, pretty easy overall. Um, when I first tried to start doing this on Master Mode, he was kind of hard. But with my girl's gear getting pretty good, and then, of course, uh, leveling up Lana, it, it's gotten a lot better. I'll hit defensive cooldowns once. You always kill Torch first, because he's got this crazy... Um, not AOE ability, but it's like this uh, line of sight ability that if anybody else gets in this line, they take a significant amount of damage. Uh, one of the mechanics of this fight is Morgan. He'll put a bubble on the, one of the other two guys, and you're supposed to switch targets. I don't give a fuck. I'll stay on Torch until he's dead. You, you do a lot less damage to him, but... It's a lot better than juggling targets and whatnot, especially when you're multiboxing, because you've got enough stuff to juggle as it is. Uh, once you get the saw bones, it's again just a burn down fight. Pretty easy overall. As you can see, Lana's keeping us all fairly topped off health wise. So we'll kill saw bones and we'll kill Borgen. Pretty easy. So uh, if you're listening, if you're not listening to the All Things Star Wars podcast, we we talk about a wide spectrum of everything related to Star Wars. Lately, we've been getting into the Clone Wars TV show, breaking those episodes down, giving our thoughts and our reviews of that. We get into the comic books a lot. We, we've been reading a lot of comics lately. Obviously, the movies we talk about. We also talk about the novels. We both just finished the new Phasma novel that just came out, and we're going to be reviewing that and talking about it on our next recording session of the podcast. So, yeah, go subscribe to All Things Star Wars. It's a fantastic podcast. It's a, a lot of people <laughs> that give us feedback say it's a, a Star Wars podcast for adults because, you know, we don't give a fuck. We use whatever language we want, and we, we have fun. If, if you don't like foul language, then there's plenty of G-rated Star Wars podcasts out there. But Dave and I, like I said, we don't give a shit. We'll talk about whatever, whenever, um, so, if you like that kind of thing, then by all means, go listen to All Things Star Wars. We always select the light side option for that little portion. So, for this next part, this, this little doorway right here is another one of those thresholds that auto-follow won't work and companions won't go through. So, I gotta manually move everybody um, and then resummon my companion. <coughs> Sorry for the jerky camera movements there. <sighs> so the second boss fight, as you saw, not that difficult. Once you get uh, tier 4 gear, and then of course you get your healer companion up to a pretty high level, it's uh, not that difficult. Hell, at this point, I could probably solo it with one tank and a high-level healer if you have Tier 4 gear and your healer is pretty high. Now, you would think at this point, hey, if you're looking to save some time, why don't you hit your rocket boost? Well, one of my three accounts doesn't have that unlocked, so I really need to work on that, but uh, sometimes I do get a little bit lazy. But it would kill just a little bit of time. Now, 
I like to skip this next droid because I can and then jump right into this next fight, literally. Ugh, now we have these dreaded infantry droids. These cannons are pain, pain in the ass only because they've got a shitload of hit points and they take for fucking ever to kill. I mean, they're not hard, especially at my gear level uh, and healer level. But at lower levels, they'll do a number on your group if you're not careful. But at this point, eh, they're whatever. They, it's just a time sink at this point. I, uh, it'll be close if I can make it across for the next clearing of the bridge. Fuck, I don't think I'm going to make it. If it's still blue when this thing is dead, I'll go. All right, let's go. Oh, it's going to be close. Uh, we're going to have to force leap. Fucking come on. All right, whew. My other girls weren't coming for some reason. All right, we made it, though. So this last boss still gives me trouble to this day because, I mean, it's not easy, even if you kind of have some pretty high gear, because especially the, the nature of the multiboxing, if I was able to better control my other two accounts, it wouldn't be as bad, but because of the nature of autofollow and, and things like that, it's, it's really hard to position them properly to keep them out of his main uh, ability, which is like a, a line of sight attack. Much like Torch from the second boss fight, but this one does a shitload of damage. So I have to try to make a conscious effort to keep my, my DPS and my healer out of that. And it's not that easy. So a way I do that is I start, put my DPS on one side of the room. And then I move my tank in from the other side. And I will taunt and leap and uh, put Lana right in the line of fire. Sorry, Lana. But I will taunt and I will hit my cooldowns immediately. And then the whole key to this fight is keeping your other girls out of that shot that he does. Um, it's okay if the tank takes it, but not the others. And again, because of the, the wonky auto-following in this game, it's really not that easy to, to position them to keep them out of it. Ugh, God damn it. And it's not unheard of for me to have some deaths during this fight just because of that. Hit my med packs. I know, Lana. God damn it. Here we taunt here. I think that's a good spot. But then he's going to knock us back, and then everything's going to get all fucked up. If Lana dies, then I'm fucked. Um, if the other two die, it's not that bad. I've been able to beat him without my, my two DPSs in the past. So, we'll see. Right, I'm gonna move. Oh, God. I know, Lana. God damn it. Ugh. All right, how can I position... It's a matter of positioning, so nobody else gets... Ah, see, and Amara just got killed. God damn it. It's actually easier once somebody dies, sadly, uh, to keep the other girls out of the line of fire. I think I'm going to be all right here. Yeah, so you think. Uh. 
What sucks is the repair costs. Like one death now costs me like 20,000 credits. Ah, fuck you. Hate when you get the ads after homeboy's dead. But that's it. So as you can see, I did finish it on master mode. Had one death overall. Sometimes I can kill him without any deaths. Um, we'll turn in the quest here. Beauty is you don't have to run back to Satil when you're done because it'll let you turn it in automatically. Need it. And these two will pass and loot their good thing. Pass. Loot their good thing. All right. So, click on that, click on that. I got two command crates out of that with a boost on, which, I don't know, it feels like it kind of sucks after that double XP weekend when I was just, like, earning mad fucking crates. And, uh, eh, somebody got three. So that's it. So as you can see, you can multi-box the Old Republic and finish a master mode flashpoint. And just as a bonus, we'll go ahead and open up my two tier four crates. Hell, if we dis disintegrate enough stuff, we may be able to get a third crate. So, oh, of course, I gotta take any uh, rep because I have very few reps that are actually maxed out. Not an upgrade, of course. So we'll disintegrate this stuff. We may get a third crate out of this, we'll see. Uh, not an upgrade, okay, boom, boom, disintegrate. Aha, very nice. Open, yes. Definitely not an upgrade. So, boom, boom. Oh, I take all um, companion gifts just because now I realize how important they are to your companion's actual performance in combat. But that's that. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, subscribe to the All Things Star Wars podcast. Dave and I, we talk about a whole slew of things related to Star Wars. I will talk about the Old Republic on there from time to time. And eventually, I'm going to get Dave to play, too. But until then, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Subscribe to the All Things Star Wars podcast. Peace.